How's it going, everybody? It is your favorite apostates. I'm McKay. And I'm Jordan. And we have a giveaway today that we've been talking about. So stay tuned for some details on that. Don't go away. So today we are taking this lovely opportunity to talk about something that is near and dear to our hearts and do it in a humorous manner. We are going to talk about purity culture. And who better to talk about purity culture than the cult victims of purity culture themselves <laughs> right here. So shout out since purity culture has a lot to do with pleasure and self care, wink, wink. We decided that we would team up with Balesa to do a giveaway. So we and our friends over at Balesa are literally sending out free vibrators and gift cards to everyone that signs up for our giveaway. Balesa is a bi women company with all of your sexuality needs. That includes sex toys, that includes erotica, that includes porn, and that even includes sex ed, which is much needed as we will get to later in this video. For real. So Balesa's mission is to empower everyone to embrace, explore, and celebrate their sexuality. And that aligns quite nicely with what we tried to do on this channel. So we thought it would be helpful to talk about some of these awesome toys that you might be receiving for free or using your free gift cards on. This one is the Demi Wand. It's got this stylish yellow charging case. It's the case and it doubles for the charger. You just plug it into a little micro USB right here on the side. And nice and convenient. It is awesome and convenient. And I mean, it's a variation on the classic wand, but it is like this high quality product. Balesa believes that orgasms are for everyone, hence the shirt. So they designed this toy with that in mind. It has this little flexible neck. It has multiple vibration speeds with none of the annoying vibration patterns that you get on a lot of other low, lower quality toys and things of that nature. So it's Real just really, talk. really awesome all around product. Okay, my favorite. This is the Pebble. First of all, what a cute name. Second, it has this cute case. Look at this, this is perfect. You don't have to put it in your regular bathroom drawer that's ugly and yeah. filled with all these things. You have a perfect little case. Also, USB chargeable. Ergonomically, look at this beauty. It fits right in your hand. It's not awkward to hold, which is beautiful, right? Super cute, colored pink. Two purposes. One, suction, hell yeah, number one. Two, vibration, hell yeah, can't go wrong. Both of these things, again, no weird vibration patterns. This device right here is life-changing, so. Cut through the crap. You heard it here first. No crappy vibration patterns, perfect suction, life-changing product right here. I am not joking, can testify, personal <laughs> experience, you need this in your life. So right now I'll put a link on screen that you can go to in order to potentially win one of these products, or like I said earlier, get it with one of the gift cards that you could win as well. Everybody is going to win something. So you can go to the link that I have right on here on screen, or you can go down to the description to find a clickable version of that same link. Remember, everybody wins something, so you can't go wrong, no matter what. So again, thank you, Belissa, our awesome friends, for sponsoring this giveaway, and we hope that everybody is able to enjoy a little something from them and us. Self-care. Okay. Now that we're we're over with that, you can go, you can get your machinery. Maybe we'll revisit that story. Uh, we wanted to talk about what we experienced a little bit, and then we'll we I've curated a couple TikTok. We're gonna react a little to some compilation um, that we thought would be good to react to and kind of give our perspective on and everything like that. So growing up in the Mormon Church. Um, and we even touched on this in our episode two weeks ago about tattoos. One of the guiding documents really as we were growing up that we were to adhere to and to study and all of these things was the pamphlet For the Strength of Youth. Now, about three weeks ago at this point, the Mormon church had their semi-annual general conference in which they took that document and they updated it and they gutted the shit out of a lot of the stuff that was really harmful that we were taught growing up. It's not to say that those harmful things no longer are there. They're just less explicit. 
So in this year's iteration, they have a new section titled Your Body is Sacred. And among some of the things, one of the sections says sexual feelings are an important part of God's plan to create happy marriages and eternal families. These feelings are not sinful. They are sacred. Sacred, secret, sinful. Lots of S's. Yeah. The, the assonance is strong up in this church. Because sexual feelings are so sacred and so powerful, God has given you his law of chastity to prepare you to use these feelings as he intends. The law of chastity states that God approves of sexual activity only between a man and a woman who are married. So I guess they didn't take quite all the edge off on that one. Many in the world ignore or even mock God's law but at the, us next time <laughs> whoops but the lord invites us to be his disciples and live a higher standard than the world's now like i said this is really cut down from what it used to be because it used to be a couple pages just on this topic alone but it does say sexual feelings are meant to create happy marriages and eternal families yes. so i mean that's still while vague it still seems it pretty cut and dry to me pretty cut and dry that you're only allowed to be sexual in the context of a heterosexual relationship which not only a heterosexual not relationship fan. but in a marriage yes in a heterosexual marriage yes excuse me get your facts straight so let us visit pages 35 and 36 of the 2011 edition of for the strength of youth in the section entitled sexual purity this one is a little uh a little more blunt as to what they are referring to. So right here, up here at the top of page 35, it, the section is titled Sexual Purity, and the little subtitle here is a quote from the family, a proclamation to the world, saying, the powers of procreation are to be employed only between a man and a woman, lawfully wedded as husband and wife. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to play Sorry. a video of Monson now so that people can see how spot on that accent I just... is. I looked squarely at him, certain I had his attention, and then I wiggled my ears. That's also from the, the proclamation, tracks. which is canonized at this point. Yep. So that's that hasn't changed. Yes, if they ever tell you that they're not homophobic, I mean, if you don't think that other people's relationships are valid just because they're not heterosexual, what? Uh, I, don't, I don't need a thesaurus to tell you what that is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next paragraph. The Lord's standard regarding sexual purity is clear and unchanging. Do not have any sexual relations before marriage and be completely faithful to your spouse after marriage. Do not allow the media, your peers, or others to persuade you that sexual intimacy before marriage is acceptable. It is not. In God's sight, sexual sins are extremely serious. They defile the sacred power God has given us to create life. The prophet Alma taught us that sexual sins are more serious than any other sins except murder or denying the Holy Ghost. That's a real thing. That's in the Book of Mormon, and they preach that nonstop. And unless you bring it up as a non-Mormon, as a detractor, and uh, then suddenly they're like, they're like, no, it's not right next to murder, bro. What the f revisionist bullshit have you been reading? Because it's right here. This is what it's we in read the as scripture as teenagers. So now let's get specific, okay? We're, we're going to get down to the nitty gritty details of what you are and aren't supposed to do. Okay. Are you listening? Take notes. Never do anything that could lead to sexual transgression. Treat others with respect, not as objects used to satisfy <laughs> lustful and selfish desires. Before marriage, do not participate in passionate kissing. Lie on top of another person or touch the private sacred parts of another person's body with or without clothing. Do not do anything else that arouses sexual feelings. Do not arouse those emotions in your own body. Pay attention to the promptings of the spirit so that you can be clean and virtuous. The spirit of the Lord will withdraw from one who is in sexual transgression. I mean, those consequences 
are pretty serious shit, especially for the Mormon who grew up believing that the companionship of the the Lord Spirit, the Holy Ghost, is like one of the most important things that you can have, even down to possibly saving your life in some cases, like a lot of people will get up and profess. So that's pretty serious. And they, they talk a lot of uh, things in here, mainly not arouse, arousing those sexual feelings in your own body, which is short for don't be touching yourself because... Not acceptable. I uh, Just as Jen says, the I, idle hands are the devil's flesh lines. <laughs> <laughs> so... And then these other things like, um, oh, it could lead you to treat others with disrespect and using them as objects like a lot of men do in their heterosexual marriage. Ironic. Once they get married. And Interesting. No participating in discussions or media that arouse sexual feelings. No participating in any type of pornography homosexual and lesbian behavior is a serious sin you know all kinds of fun things to tell teenagers yeah in their early stages of development oh yeah i wonder why people leave i wonder why purity and culture screws everyone up they're overcorrecting with this new edition so that's what we grew up this they were drilling that shit into our head and beyond this i mean for the boys in the pre or the the men specific classes that we would have i mean we were talking about the dangers of pornography monthly we just made a tiktok about how this problem extends into very very serious issues yeah and it's it's something that they're always drilling into people's heads so maybe they're noticing that it has a backfiring effect (laughs) because missionaries struggle with it bishops state presidents Also, keep in mind that this includes specifics as far as modesty and things go. And mind you, while the men were sitting around and learning about the dangers of pornography, the young women in Mormon classes were learning about how wearing tank tops would cause the boys to stumble and not be able to maintain your purity. So from a very young age, Mormon women are taught that they are responsible for the actions and feelings of men, which is a very dangerous teaching that of purity culture, just absolutely toxic. On that note, I was taught that if you had sex before marriage, you were a licked cupcake because no one wants to eat a licked cupcake. And if you need that purity culture bullshit energy, smashing that patriarchy into the ground in your life, then Exmo Candle Co. has a candle called Licked Cupcake and it is the most delicious thing ever. So just a quick shout out there. Shout out. And these things, they do extend into even it like you don't just hit a switch and turn these things off when you get into your marriage or correct whatever these are things that are going to outlast your limits that they the church has set for you and it's going to be something that you have to overcome especially if you decide to leave altogether it's not like you're just gonna throw it all out and things like that yeah This also, for whatever reason, because there's really not too much that's ever been said explicitly by like actual church leadership or their policies or anything like that. It bleeds into toys and things of that nature. Well, except for that memo in the 80s that said that oral sex was not allowed. And then they like quietly in the night kind of rescinded it, but never really did. They just dropped it. They didn't ever really say anything from there. So the toys thing was rather interesting when we were going to get married. It wasn't something that we had really discussed up until that point. But before you get married, you have to have an interview with your local leaders so that they can do a final check right before you get married to make sure that you're worthy to enter the temple and to be sealed and all this stuff basically to make sure you're not touching each other before you're married yeah touching your each other or yourselves yeah so we go in with this guy who we haven't met before um we were i was definitely new to the area and jordan was not that involved with this guy so anyway he interviews us both 
individually he does the the worthiness questions which we've discussed here before mind you we've never had to you don't sit in front of a stake president together with another person so this whole experience was just really it's bizarre pretty, on the whole yeah but he goes on to tell us the importance of marriage and blah 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 and he gave us a pamphlet and i'm pretty sure we ho- we still have it and um he ends the interview by saying um be like careful to not include machinery in the bedroom because it can detract from the sacredness of the marriage and machinery was the word that he used so if you've been here a while way back in jordan and mckay lore we've talked about this in the tiktok days and so everybody's like haha machinery because that's that's exactly what happened what else did he say i think he used the words machinery and tools tools yes he said tools that can help but yeah it it destroy it can help you know break down the sacredness of marriage and it can cause you to yeah. become reliant on something that's not your spouse and drive a, a wedge between you okay <laughs> and mind you this is like a 60 well he was a little younger probably 40 50 year old man yeah talking to to early 20s about these things in front of two people who currently are going to get married within the next little while and so it's just a very awkward dynamic it's really strange and the the church is set up in a way where that is probably not in any sort of manual or anything like that but just from his experiences he thought as a local leader that had dominion over us that that was applicable to us and it was just his personal opinion so yikes this dude is is afraid man he's afraid his poor apparently wife. or the people that he was over were having issues because they i mean you just just have fun together it doesn't matter who's getting what job done or you know what's going on on in that front or anything let's like say this is not standard because we know no. plenty of mormons who use machinery you know and tools and tools and they don't care and the, the more general stance that people think of that mormons say is that you know leadership stays out of your bedroom and as long as you're keeping your covenants and you're keeping the law of chastity like only between you and your spouse and they don't really care what you do so yeah and so even, that was even bizarre then, that's like not a standard no thought like it varies so much which is really really strange but these things are pretty cut and dry as to what they were they've been saying they've eased up they still are not okay with anything that deviates from the heteronormative so anyway let's get to these tiktoks i wanted to start with one tiktok that was relative to what we're talking about with mormonism and then we're just gonna move on to the greater um more broad topic of purity culture as a whole first tiktok i wanted to show obviously on the topic of purity culture is going to have to be one from my favorite i guess (laughs) most hated favorite in a most hated sense uh talks that was given by mormon apostle boyd packer in the 70s now boyd packer is not he is not that far detached from us he was an apostle until he died up in 2015 so it's not that long ago but this is a very infamous talk that he gave in general conference in front of all of mormondom and was on the lds website archived up until last year (laughs) Um, so without further ado here's the little factory allegory we liken to having a little factory This little factory moves quietly into operation as a normal and expected pattern of growth and begins to produce that life-giving substance. This little factory will sometimes produce an oversupply of this substance. The release valve that controls that little factory will open and release all that is excess. The factory and the automatic release valve works on its own schedule. Perhaps he is encouraged by unwise or unworthy companions to tamper with that factory. If you do, that little factory will speed up. You must leave that little factory alone long enough for it to slow down. 
but you can get the little factory slowed back to where it should be. It might be. This is so nasty. So nasty. The, what he's talking about, like the biological process isn't the nasty part. It's just the way that he explains this that is disgusting. Yeah. Yeah, talking about nature is fine. But then like taking nature and then making it into some sort of industrialized thing, like talking about wet dreams, like an automatic release valve. What the f what the f was going through this guy's head, man? It was so weird. So obviously that is being erased from uh, Mormon memory, but this had a lot of effect on a lot of people for a really long time. Okay, so this next one is also Mormon specific. This is a video that was taken. That's outside the library, isn't it? I think so. I've yeah. never really been on the BYU Provo campus. I actually have. But nonetheless, this is a video that was taken on the BYU Provo, Utah campus. Um, interviewing students, asking them if they would rather die a horrible death or watch a porn video. And here is what they had to say. Would you rather die a horrible and excruciating death or watch a porn video? Uh, just die excruciating death. Yeah. Probably die. Die a horrible excruciating death. Die. I mean... Right off the <laughs> bat, are you serious? Well, we're just talking about like a couple video this is like a, a theoretical minutes, situation like yeah. oh my god and not to like be lost on the nuance of there's a lot of abuse and things that go on in the porn industry but just on its face this is pretty ridiculous Watch a porn video okay. why would i die a horrible death <laughs> Thank you. For <laughs> uh, uh, die a horrible death. Porn video for sure. I'd rather be alive. <laughs> I would rather die a horrible, excruciating pain death because then you'd be a legend. <laughs> Probably. The you. <laughs> what? <laughs> Do you want to run that back real quick and just say that again out loud? What? You would die a legend. No. What's, what's going to be inscribed on your, your headstone? This guy decided to do this instead of watch, watch a, porn. a porno. Like, bro. Okay. Second one. Sorry. That yeah. makes me a sinner. Drown. Drown. I mean, I don't really want to die. But, like, I don't really want to watch porn either. But. Watch, a, watch a porn video. I'd probably die yep. an excruciating death. Are you kidding me? That's obvious. Uh, I'd watch porn video. Um. <laughs> the porn one? <laughs> I'm going to watch that porn. <laughs> I'm Hell to yeah. <laughs> Watch porn. Yes. <laughs> Thank God there were some voices of reason. But if I were to extrapolate this to the larger population, if they were surveyed at BYU, I'm sure the majority would be they would die that horrible, excruciating death over yeah. having to watch a porn video. Even though, let's be real, 90% of these people, not just men, but women included, are watching porn. So, like, hello. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. You're already, you're already touching yourself. Just It's you know, fine. It's fine. There are many dangers to masturbation. Okay, some of these are funny, and s some of these are not intended to be funny. <laughs> this, this is the latter of the two. But I believe the number one thing that is so dangerous about masturbation, not only that it's a sin, that's the worst part about it, right? But the, the fruit of it, what it produces, is so putrid because masturbation essentially takes the intimacy with God and conversation that you have with God and flushes it down the toilet. Because if you essentially masturbate, you have already Literally? put a wedge. <laughs> Dude, I am not even going to come for her on that one because I say so many filler words like that. Literally. But deteriorating your intimacy with God. That just sounds gross. Pride or shame or both. And three, self-indulgence is not what we were created for. 1 Corinthians 6.18. I'm not going to look that shit up. I don't care. But deteriorates your intimacy intimacy with God. I don't know why people choose to use the word intimacy in that context. Like, I understand intimacy is not synonymous with sex. But come on, the societal way that we use that word, it, it has the connotation. So just understand that. But, like, it, God's watching all the time. Make him wish he weren't. 
Oh my God. Of between you and God and the communication that you can have with God. Because all of a sudden, either there's pride or there's shame, but there's no in between. See, masturbation is, essentially creates pride and then it creates shame. And I what? hear the Lord saying... Who is proud of, I mean, generally, right? Like, be proud and masturbating. But who's walking around and been like, I masturbated like 18 times today, y'all? Like, who's doing that? It's not I, it's a prideful TikTok, act. I guess. Oh, my God. Also, what would be wrong with that, honestly? <sighs> what did you do today? You probably, what'd you do? You made breakfast only? Masturbation is a coping skill, my friends. It is. That... The enemy is trying to use masturbation over you and over your life for however long he has to not only condemn you, but to actually lead you farther and farther and farther from the presence of God. Not only because... Dude, she literally is saying idle hands are the devil's fleshlights. Oh like, my God. <laughs> it's a shameful thing, but because it actually degrades and it deterior deteriorates at your intimacy with the Lord. And so this is, this is the number one thing that, that you want to watch out is, okay, if you're struggling, if you fall into temptation, you essentially will find yourself not wanting to go to the Lord or feeling ashamed to go to the Lord and feeling like you all of a sudden, like you don't hear the voice of the Lord, or maybe you didn't hear from God. And, and it just causes this confusion, right? So we see two things already. It deteriorates your relationship with the Lord and it causes confusion. The third thing is that it's, well, not the third thing, but the first thing. It's like sexual morality. Flee from it. Run from it, right? Okay, she so. She did not set this up whatsoever. No, she, she is just Not the rambling. third thing, but the first thing, yeah. So what does a lot of the research out there say about what makes shame about masturbation worse? Religiosity. Hands down. Hands down. It is the driving factor for shame. And there are many Mormons out there who are termed to have like these porn addictions and things, which mind you, are there cases where that might be the thing and it's impairing you from doing activities and things? Sure, right? There's extreme ends of the spectrum. But by and large, watching porn a few times a week does not mean you have a porn addiction. And that's what the Mormon church <laughs> likes to spew. And in reality, it's the religiosity that ties shame to it. And a lot of people who have left the Mormon church were like, I had this like porn addiction problem and then I left the church and I don't even watch porn as often as I used to because the shame has been detached from it. And so it goes from like being this addictive thing to like being a normal yeah. part of being a human. So it's, it's like, like the, the forbidden fruit effect. And it's not even like there is ethical porn out there. So like yeah. we're, you know, like shout we out have, Balesa. Shout out Balesa. Like we don't even have that problem. Like, is there a lot of unethical stuff out there? Absolutely. But if you know where to go, then that's not even a problem. So by and large on the whole, like we're just making this out to be like a whole thing. And this is a Brittany Don take and I can't listen to it anymore. This is a, a B Dong take. This is also way longer than I thought it was. I'm not watching three minutes of no. this. <laughs> My heart broke when I saw this video. I'm no perfect Christian by any means, and even now, a lot of people make jokes when I say that I'm not having sex until marriage. But this is exactly why. When I would have sex with guys, they would act differently right after or just leave. If you feel this way too, my heart goes out to you because I've been there so many times. This is why it is so special to wait until marriage. When you choose to have sex with someone, it bonds you to that person physically, okay. emotionally. Uh -oh. Okay, we're getting into Brittany Dawn's whole ties here, but are some men like that? Absolutely. Do does like do those situations happen? Absolutely. Like do those situations happen with women? Are some women like that? Absolutely. So let's just take that into account here, because at the same time, like that's just part of you know a relationship or a human. It's not necessarily everyone's experience. Every time you have sex yeah. with a person, like there are people who have been together a million years and aren't married and don't have that problem. So maybe it's the men you're dating that's the issue. Maybe you just need to live by the all men. Maybe it's the women you're Mantra. dating that's the issue. Like, let's throw into this that there's probably another factor at hand that ne isn't necessarily the n that you're not waiting till marriage and God is punishing you yeah. because the dude gets up and leaves afterwards. Yeah. Well, and going through these, something that I noticed a lot was they were moving away from it being like, this is a commandment of God and you, how you show your love to Jesus and all of this shit. And they're moving toward this rhetoric that's like 
oh, well, it will protect you from awful men, which is just like a roundabout way of getting to the same point because you have to cover yourself up because men will be tempted and blah, 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 blah. And who's to say that your husband won't do this? Yeah. Who's to say that your wife won't do this after you get married? You're putting a lot of surety onto that fact that that won't happen. A lot of stock. Well, you mentioned B-Dong, so I'm going to let this roll. Spiritually. I don't know about you, but when I would have sex with someone, it would mess with me emotionally, and that's because it creates a soul tie. Oh, there it is. She literally says it. There it is. (laughs) Hurt so easily when they do leave. Stop creating soul ties with people that you are not even committed to. I'm not judging anyone. I used to use sex as a way to numb my pain, but I was so tired of getting that temporary fulfillment just for a little bit for it to leave me empty and feeling awful afterwards. This is just my personal opinion. And let's just say right now, is there anything wrong with waiting until marriage? Absolutely not. No. If that's your deal, then that's your deal. I highly respect it. But to say like these broad generalizations of this is what happens when you have sex with somebody is you get soul ties and this is just, it's not that's true. That's damaging. It's not true and it's, it's damaging. Like, yeah. Jesus was crazy passionate about the subject of purity. It starts with the eyes. Jesus said this, sounds crazy, but he said, if you look lustfully at a person, you've already committed adultery in your heart. He said, if your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. Dear God, was he being literal. I hope not. Can you imagine you walk into work? You see another guy, he's got a patch on an eye. (laughs) And so do you. You're like, Christian? Yeah, Christian, yeah, yeah. (laughs) I feel like that's the reality of it, is everybody would look like that. Yeah. Because everyone does that. Would. Yeah. Not just the men. I mean, he was talking about everybody. Not just men can have lustful thoughts or sexual thoughts. And yeah. And I mean, mind you, we always think, you know, the things that don't typically get addressed in these type of videos is there are asexual and aromantic and, you know, yeah. people like they're non-binary who, people. And but none of this applies yeah. to, right? And so we always like to address that in that sense because that is a part of this. But there is also this toxic idea that like only men are sexual. And then if women are sexual, then it's like you're slutty. They're deviant. Yeah. Or, Which know, is, again, just toxic. Nature. Uh, probably going to have to mute this one. <laughs> but the text on screen, the guy is just pointing to it. He says, one of the worst lies the devil can tell you is, oh, we're going to get married anyways, so having sex together is totally fine. Okay. That's a I lie mean, from Satan, I guess. If you've got a wedding date and everything set. You don't have to get married to have sex, and there's nothing wrong know, with right? waiting, and there's nothing wrong with having sex before, and there's nothing wrong with having one night stands, and there's nothing wrong with being a sex worker. And God, how many times do we have to repeat these things? But the Christians and other evangelicals, not all Christians, but a lot of them, are never going to listen to this, and Mormons are never going to get away from this rhetoric. Not never. Yeah. I hate always and never. But highly likely to not get away from this, and it's just exhausting. Because who uses TikTok? Young people. A lot of young people. Gen Z. A lot of Gen Z. So who's getting infiltrated potentially with this information and thinking that it's possibly true? Young people who then grow up and have that potentially reinforced. And then they become adults who have really toxic mindsets and a toxic relationship with sex and their sexuality. And then we have all this repression. And God, we've just... This is exhausting. Yeah. Yeah, it's these young influencers, too, that piss me off the most. It's just the way that they do it. And I came across so many videos of men. I I didn't include them because it's fuck those people. Men on TikTok explaining why sexual purity is important um, in such a fucking condescending manner. Again, for copy, this is the nature of TikTok, uh, copyrighted music. But I'll read what says on screen for those who are listening. This are things that have helped us to stay absent, abstinent for five years. Also, I'm guessing they have been dating for five years and it looked like they had just gotten engaged and like last year. Are they living together? So no. Or are they married currently? Uh, I don't know if they got married yet, but they definitely didn't get married yet because this is their parents house and one of them's rich as fuck. Yeah, because that's a chandelier in a bathroom. Yeah. So they've been together. Here's what's helped them stay abstinent for five years. 
friendship over attraction, heart eyes. Okay. I mean, Jordan and I are best friends. I don't know what that has to do with not having one, sex. Why does one have to be over the other? Yeah, right. Okay. Commitment to God before each other. What? Ah, uh, dude, I hate that idea so much. Like, God is over your relation. Yeah, you really having God right there in your relationship. Your relationship is no longer dyadic. Dude, it's therapist shit up in here. Toxic. Yeah. You're having God in your intimacy, a third person, a man even. A threesome with God? A threesome with <gasps> God. Wow, maybe if we tell them that, they'll stop. Right? Only things we would, or only do things we would encourage our kids to do. Gross. That's, okay. Gross. This was stupid. Please go away. Awful. Rating the. Okay, this one is equal parts funny and sad. I definitely love the execution, but man, it's demoralizing. Talks I received growing up, Purity Culture Edition. First up, we have the chocolate bar. Our leader unwrapped a chocolate bar and we had to stand in a circle and hold it in our hands for five seconds before passing it to the next person. And then at the end, we put it on a plate and looked at it. And she was like, would you want to eat that? And everybody was like, ew, no. And she was like, cool, I bet your future husband would say the same. This gets a zero out of 10 because everybody in the group was in like sixth grade, but I was in like the second grade. So even though it didn't traumatize oh me, my God. it didn't give I enough didn't context first time. for me to know what was going on until many years later. Next up, we have... We've done a video talking about these kinds of parables before. It that's was an old video. a first one, but holy shit. And passing it around, that's just disgusting. Like, just yeah. the chocolate bar is the disgusting well, what part. What are you implying here? That people go and sleep with multiple different partners? And you disagree. different partners. And you, you never wash, ever? Apparently. Well, that's not even what I took from you it. You disintegrate, yeah. You, like, deteriorate, like, as a person to the point that you're, like, a liquid. You literally change forms of matter, apparently. <laughs> Jesus, dude. Oh. Uh, peppermint candy we each got one and had to hold it in our mouths and not eat it while she read some bible verses and then we took it out and she tried to make something about the red going away and it was white and it was pure because it was just with one person but then we had to try to offer it to the person next to us and obviously they wouldn't take it because it had been in our mouths and it just didn't make a ton of sense uh except for a couple of the boys did in fact eat each other's peppermints um, so that gets two gross boys out of 10. Uh, they do get partial credit for having it be a co-ed event. Well, that doesn't surprise me at all. Of course, that would be a Mormon thing. The young men Dude, would right. definitely eat it. I would definitely. Also, what a, that is a, like a really weak metaphor. Moving right along to construction paper. Our youth pastor glued a pink and a blue piece of construction paper together and then ripped it apart. And there were pieces of pink on the blue and blue on the pink it didn't separate cleanly uh this one wasn't actually that bad it was in a co-ed youth group of 100 plus kids they used actual medical terminology and it focused more on your emotional health and well-being than it did on your purity and for that reason it gets one holy spirit out of 10. Still it would have scored higher but yeah. the youth pastor did talk about his wife a lot and it did result in a girl a grade above me absolutely sobbing by the end of it it's like this idea of fragmentation, like you... It's soul ties. It, yeah, soul ties, fragmentation, it's all the same bullshit. Like, a piece of you goes with them. Bro, you stay whole all the time. I, I don't know and what there, to tell you. There's nothing wrong with having an emotional connection yeah. to previous partners and things. That doesn't make you any less whole as a person. Like, I think that's just generally being, like, yeah. a human. Like, if anything, yeah, you're just adding to other people. You're not losing a part of you. No. No. And that's just like breaking up with somebody. Like, yeah. you have this, like, really strong attachment. And people like to prioritize sex as it's this, like, yeah, it's like, you know, I tell my clients, like, the spectrum of intimacy. We have zero regular emotional connection, like, doing very simple things before we get to sex, which is all the way the f*** over here. So yeah. it's like, I just hate this idea that you're like less than because you've had sex with multiple people. Like, <sighs> why would you think that way, Jordan? It I sounds like know. you don't have any, uh, any skin in the game on that one. 
I'm Brittany Dawn, and I had sex before marriage, and now I'm a telephone person, and I'm just, I've changed my life, and God loves me now that I'm not having sex with random people. I defrauded the people of the state of Texas, blah, blah, blah. And I can make fun of Brittany Dawn because I was that person. I was that Mormon that had sex before marriage and then used it as a talking point to try to sway other teens into not having sex before marriage, so... Suck on that one, Brittany. There you go. Last and absolutely least is the talk that I got from my parents. This one doesn't get a rating because you don't get credit for missing assignments. <laughs> the closest thing I got to a talk from my mom was her having me read the instructional pamphlet from a box of tampons out loud to her a good two years after I'd already started my period. <laughs> rating. That one just gets Excellent. me. Two years after I'd already started my period. Reason why I wanted to include this one was because there is correlation between, it feels like, at least, especially here in the, the state of Utah, where there is no sex ed curriculum that teaches it's anything other only. than abstinence. Um, it usually goes, purity culture usually goes hand in hand with lack of sex education. So these people who waited their whole lives up until getting married didn't explore their bodies in any way, shape, or form, or allegedly, or they profess to never have done that, are then just like, yep, just go at it. Your wedding night, that's what everybody's There's expecting There's a TikTok to do. that we included in here that addresses that. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that one. You are this guy, and if you're with a man, he chews so, you up. So men are bad? No, no. You want to be make with women the man. And sticky. Oh, no, hold up. The thing is, you want to be new for the man. How do you tell if men are new? Oh, no, I don't think that's the point. <laughs> This brings me back to being a teacher. This gives me such teacher vibes. Like when you're trying to introduce the concept and the kids just keep interrupting you with nonsense. Like, I love this so much. And you're much. like, that's... Stop. <laughs> it's not where we're going. Pause. The, the point point is, the flavor's yeah. gone. You, do you like old gum? Yeah, I took some from under the table at church. No, that's but not... It gave me tetanus. Okay, well, that's also not true. Um, <laughs> so, what you want to do... You, you... <laughs> that's such a kid thing to say want to not be with men like Ella DeGeneres no they call that being that. Lebanese or you okay, I, I don't think we're should we all be Catholic let's now? move on to a different metaphor you are this oh guy. I fucking love that so the much the way you can poke holes in that how so do you easy. tell if a man is new <laughs> whoops <laughs> whoops this is my response to people who say that purity culture is toxic and that we need to cancel purity culture. Um, the reality is, is that many leaders have made purity toxic, but just because people have made it toxic doesn't mean that it's unbiblical. They just had the wrong revelation of what it meant. So you need to catch the right rev Isn't it so... Unbiblical. Isn't it so convenient that other people just misunderstood, but you understand... This Gotta is catch the that right revelation. Way to practice purity. Revelation of what purity means, because the Bible says that blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Um, and how can a young person stay pure by living according to God's word? Um, Jesus then goes on to tell the Pharisees that you need to first clean the inside of the cup, and then the outside will be clean as well. And so, what is like this a menstrual cup? Us? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't isn't the inside the one that you want to clean? I mean, both. This, I, I guess clean all the sides of your cup. <laughs> <laughs> inside, the outside, the cleaning upside. the menstrual cup, according to McKay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is that some? Can you put that in the dishwasher? I think some of them you can. That's rad. By I the way, I think so that God does care about purity. But remember that man looks at the outward appearance, God looks at the heart. And so if we are going to practice purity, it always first starts with the heart. See, when your heart is pure, then your actions will, will follow. And what purity culture taught was like, no sex before marriage, no masturbation, no this, no that, all the things you can't do, right? But God is really concerned with the condition of your heart. How is your heart? Is what your about heart people who pure? have heart conditions? <laughs> <laughs> it's a valid question i don't want to listen to this woman anymore is it's it's a lot she goes on for like five because she's years. right it is all about what you can't do but i i am failing to see what the the other side of that is i just like to say that waiting until marriage to have sex for the first time is a really bad idea i could not agree with him more 
let's get a little vulnerable. Do you see that fucking fly? Anyway, moving on. So I grew up in the 90s where purity culture was like all the rage. There was even a point where I was like, I'm not even gonna kiss until marriage. Well, my husband and I did technically wait until marriage. We weren't like 100% pure, but you know what I mean. When I tell you that my wedding night mm, sucked, it's an understatement. On my honeymoon, I called my sister, who's a nurse, literally bawling on the phone saying, I think my vagina's broken. And because purity culture taught me that it was my job to pleasure my husband and it was all about him or he'd go watch porn and cheat on me. Literally, it took me a few years to be like, hey, what about me in this little tango? I'm 32 and I'm still unlearning shit, guys. I fucking hate purity culture. This is the reality of it. This is the reality. And this is not just Mormons. This is just across the board. Like, there's no, they expect it to, you know, automatic switch, sex is bad, now sex is good. Yeah. Like, that's a really intentional shift, but it's also a really difficult one because you're fighting against years of indoctrination, and it's really hard to just make that transition overnight on your honeymoon. And so, and then you're not educated because there's no sex ed for a lot of these people in fundies. So you don't know generally how it works. You don't know about tearing. You don't know that you're supposed to pee afterwards. You don't know, yeah. like none of that is happening simultaneously. And so then you get on your honeymoon and all this is happening. And then you think that there's maybe something wrong with you because it might be painful or, and then we also have this fundy religious culture where men are always first and it's our job to take care of them. And so why would we prioritize yeah. women's pleasure or what women want? Yeah, it's it's just like an added layer to the things like that. And that's why like we're doing this giveaway or whatever, and we've already talked about it, but like I'm not out here saying, oh yeah, 5% of our audience identifies as male. You guys don't even fucking bother or anything like that because if you have a partner that has a vulva or AFAB or anything of the sort, then these things can still be of use to both of you in your relationship because it is a partnership, right? So it's not just about one partner or the other partner, it, you know. Well, then there's this comment here. And it here. can always be always about you. It's you true. Want. It can be. <laughs> and this comment right here establishes a good point then you're lying there on your honeymoon thinking this is it this is it for the rest of my life and that's the thing purity culture and sex establishes that so you do that for the first time and it's awkward and it's weird and you're trying to figure it out and maybe both of you can't figure it out and there's no even pleasure that comes out of it and so then that's just like established as like i guess that's what it is because you've never been told differently and that is just a recipe for not wanting to do that for yeah the rest of your marriage yeah so if you want healthy relationships that have healthy sexuality, then telling them all the things that's going to be wrong with them because they do things that you think are wrong is probably <laughs> not the way to do it. And it's probably not the way to maintain people in your congregation. Okay, shout out to this creator. Sorry, I'm not gonna be able to play the video because they didn't have any captions or whatever. And there was music in the background, so we're just... But the joke that we wanted to show was somebody probably made this meme and they thought, yeah, this one's for the boys and we fucking hate women. And yeah, I'm going to throw this on the internet and it's going to be awesome. But just... Okay, I'm going to read it for our listeners. Bring it back here. No hymen, no diamond. Real men don't settle for blown out street meat. That is so aggressive and also hilarious because for me, I can take this with a grain of salt now because that's totally bullshit. But if you were a woman and maybe a young woman and you saw this and you're like, oh my God, that's me. Let's not even address. I'm sure maybe there's some doctors and OB OBGYNs that can speak to this more eloquently than I am. I'm pretty sure there's some women that don't have hymens. And I'm pretty sure even strenuous physical activity can, you know, cause separation or breaking or tearing or whatever of that. Um, so it's not necessarily even something like having sex might not even be a factor in it changing that. And I just, and there's other things around that that I'm not remembering at the time and you guys can sound off in the comments. Don't come for me. For I'm real. not an OBGYN <laughs> or a medical professional, but I've at least heard some of those things. And so medically this is just inaccurate. 
just absolutely inaccurate. Yeah. And who's to say that even you would even be able to tell, like, as a man, like, y'all don't even know where the clit is. You think you're going to be able to tell what this is and whether or not it's torn or broken or whatever the hell word you want to call it. Yeah. Like, guys, get real. How, how are you going to know, my guy, if you're, you've been so pure? <laughs> you've got nothing to compare it to, right? What's the next Allegedly. One? So I wanted to include this one because I kind of wanted to end on a note of education and not total fucking garbage. So let's let's review some truth here. Fuckers, some of the comments on this video are atrocious, so I thought I would take a minute of my time to give a quick little lesson. Please keep in mind, I did not go to school to study this, but I do have a basic understanding of how my body works. So if you did go to school for this and anything that I say is incorrect, please feel free to call me out. But I doubt that any of those are your credentials. Check. So here we go. Your vagina is made of highly elastic tissue. Elastic, like this, that's supported by muscle in your pelvic floor. Muscle, we know, gets stronger the more that you use it. Now, your vaginal canal can vary person to person because that's just how we're born. Here we go. Two inches. Diameter, across, got it? All right, let's say this is you, Chuck. Actually, that's generous. This is you, Chuck. This is Brad, this is Chad, this is Tom. This is the whole basketball team. Okay, let's take a look. Oh my gosh, we're still at two inches in diameter. Funny how that works. There are only two things that are proven to change this. As you age, that elastic, that muscle wears down or multiple childbirths. So yet another conversation that men like to center themselves in that actually has nothing to do with them. Tucker, some of the comments there you have it. There you have it. Very eloquently put. The amount of misinformation out there really, truly is absolute garbage. There is just five million different ways to demean people with vaginas and yeah. think that it's them that's the problem. And then if you have sex with a million men, then you're going to be loose. And that's just... It just shows that men have literally no understanding of women's anatomy, which just, and people with vulva's anatomy, and it's just, and people with vagina's anatomy, and it's just absolutely horrifying to me that this is the way that, like, there's absolutely zero respect or basic, like, understanding or any of these things, or even a desire to understand yeah. any of these things. Like, if you have there's, a partner, you should know about there's these There's no requirement either. This no. Is, this is part of living in a patriarchal society, because... People who have vaginas and uteruses, they have to, for their own health and safety, know about their own anatomy. And then they're also expected to know about their partner's anatomy so that they can properly please them. And then on the other side, people with penises are just like... Not all of them. I don't have to fucking care. But a lot of them. I'm Yeah, I'm talking requirements in a lot of circumstances. Just culture surrounding it. They, there's no emphasis on knowing anything about accurate. So it's it's just wild to me, but it makes a lot of sense. And it you look at things, and we've come a long way when it comes to purity culture and patriarchy and that sexual setting and everything like that. But Jesus Christ, we got a long this way is to a go. Young people's app, generally speaking. And kids, a lot of people call it a kids app, but we know that everybody of all ages gets on here, so it doesn't really matter that much. But I mean, this is what young people are still talking about. So it's not exactly something that's gone. We've made we've made progress, but let's bring it the f home. Come on, let's go. And oh. do not want slutty woman. False. We like good girls over here. We like bad girls over here. We like girls who fuck for work and we like girls who wanna twerk. Now, if you do not wanna be a slut, I respect your boundaries. But if you wanna be a slut, then baby, break it down for me. I just and love this. What a beautiful freaking way to end False. this. We like good girls over here. We like bad girls. Love it, love it, love it. So, Amazing. Yeah, we kind of we kind of lied there on that the the one right before it. We we're like, this is the last one, but that uh, we this forgot. This one, one is was amazing. There. So. Go forth and pleasure yourselves and your partners and do Learn all about of basic that. human yeah. anatomy. Yeah. Go forth and save having sex with your partner until you get married. Honestly, I don't care. That should be a, a choice that you make, not a choice that your church makes for you or anything like that. Or somebody tells you that in order to be right in God's eyes... You have to do that. If that's a personal choice, we're all for that. But men 
at the tops of churches telling women and young young people as a whole what to do with their own bodies we just we don't f- with that so real talk so in summary do what you want to do regarding your sexuality and your sexual preferences and watch porn if you'd like to ethically source it and practice freaking self-care because there's nothing wrong with it there's nothing wrong with it god is not looking down on you and saying wow this is terrible so please just <laughs> and do if it he is make him wish you weren't <laughs> exactly (laughs) like just do it and if you don't want to do that because that's not your thing then don't do it but don't let some stupid patriarchal religious bullshit hold you back from experiencing pleasure and doing the things that you want to do scene end cut anyway i'm gonna blaze through this real quick as our patrons and our members are rolling up the screen thank you to them if this is something that you liked seeing if you'd like to hear more about it you can hit that subscribe button down please below. subscribe please subscribe you can if you're just listening you can hit the like button or the the download button whatever the hell it is on give the us a rating that you're on. give us a rating you can hear more about us and our unhinged musings if you will if you would like to support us, you can check out our Etsy shop, Happy Brain Collective, or our Teespring. The links to both of those are in the description of this YouTube video, so go and find that if that is something you are interested in. You can also follow us on TikTok and Instagram. We post stuff on there. It's a lot of shit posting on Instagram. It's pretty fun, but uh, topical. Jordan runs the shit out of that. You can find both of those at Jordan MK on either one. That's basically where you can find us anywhere. You can also join our super awesome Discord server if you would like to hear me beat myself up about the the stupid mistakes we make while we're running this channel and everything. You can go over there and join. Such as premiering our video at yeah. 1 a.m. last week versus 1 p.m. So Apologies. for those of you that enjoyed it, Apologies. we hope you loved it. Yeah, <laughs> that one's on me. So, um, yeah, join our Discord and you can get some, <laughs> some insight that you would never imagined. Also, we just have an awesome community there. It's super fun. Everybody's always saying something and talking about something. So It's always popping off. Always popping off. Anyway. Shout out to Balesa for sponsoring this video. Shout out to Balesa. We appreciate each and every one of you. We love you. We hope you love yourselves. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>